Atlantic Odyssey has pitted me against fire and ice. The obvious route to the coast and safety follows the course of a mountain river. Okay, just follow this down. I don't want to hang around long in this, so see this gorge? Prime flash flood territory. That water level is raining like this. It can rise very fast. Work our way along and down. Come on. In this narrow, steep-sided gorge, if there were a flood, the river would rise before you could climb to safety or anchor yourself. Keep out of as much as you can. The water's flowing straight off a glacier. It's barely above freezing. And it's rapidly draining the heat from my body. It's never so raining in this country. Here in the mountains, they can get over 15 feet of snow and rain in a year. It's all taking the line and least resistance to the coast. And following it is a quick but risky option. It's waterfall. OK, we're going to need to have to rip her off this. Try and find an anchor point. I'll be able to use this, look. Should have enough rope, I think, for this. It's starting to get very cold right now. The technique is the same as I used on the glacier. Place a loop of rope over a bollard. That way, once I'm at the bottom, I can pull on one end to retrieve it. Then both strands wrapped around my body create friction. This technique works well, but requires nerves of steel. The glacier rappel I did was dry. Back there, I could get a good grip on the rope. Here, the freezing cold water stings my eyes and numbs my hands. Keeping any sort of grip on the line is a nightmare, and seeing solid footholds almost impossible. If you're going to commit yourself like this, you need to be confident that you can keep moving forward. There's only just enough of it in that. Got a long old way. But I'm burning up energy just to keep hypothermia at bay. And those calories need to be replaced. The average man burns two and a half thousand calories a day. In a situation like this, you can double that. That's the equivalent of fueling up with over a hundred apples. If you're putting next to nothing in, you've got to think about the most energy efficient way of making progress. You need to be a little bit careful following rivers like this through gorges. You've got to weigh up the alternatives. You know, out there in the high mountains, crazy winds, a lot of snow. That's what's going to burn our valuable energy. The problem with a cave like this is knowing whether there's a way out at the other end. As long as it's here a bit of daylight, let's follow this. But at the moment, I've still got that shimmer of light. You see it spray down there. Let's get down to that bit. Tunnels like this are carved out by glacial meltwater. I'm just following where it leads. Some river left. That's a dead end. Keep going river right. At this point, with a 30-foot waterfall blocking any retreat, it's all about steady nerves. <laughs> Panic now, and you might never make it out alive. It's opening right up out there. Yeah, that's what I love about the wild. You never really know what you're going to encounter. You've got to keep that pioneer spirit. Be prepared to take a few risks but also be adaptable if it doesn't work out. And this is good, it's taking right through the rock. 
Rivers can present a real threat to the survivor, but they can also be your best resource. A great source of water and food. There are trout in these rivers all year round. If you can spot one under the banks, they can be caught even if you don't have a rod and line. And tickling trout, you know, it's not a black art. The people often think it is. You don't actually tickle them at all. You just bring your hand in very gently and you're just slowly shifting the fish in towards the bank. And then when you get in close enough, you just push them against the bank, hold them and pull them out. As the trout works the stream looking for food, it will hide from its own predators under overhanging banks like this. And then I should be able to bring them out nice and slowly, look. You just need patience. But in a river like this, that's going to be fine just to bite the head off that and eat it raw. Let the guts out, give it a rinse. And that's fine to eat. That's just what I wanted. There are only about 130 calories in this trout, but every little helps. Good, okay. Getting everything out on the way down. Iceland is constantly being reshaped. If it's not volcanoes and earthquakes, it's erosion and the effects of the weather that keeps tearing the earth apart. It's like a huge rock fall. Half the canyon has just collapsed in there. And the river seems to be running straight under it. Look. Yeah, that is not the way to go. The problem is, the side of the canyon looking very steep, look. This huge scar shows where the land just collapsed. There's no vegetation on it, which means there's nothing to bind the soil together and create handholds. Oh, this is what I mean, look. Try grabbing hold of that. And use this, look. Make a couple of little mini axes and I can just drive into this soft moss. A couple of those. In, pull myself up. Okay. Sometimes survival throws up limited options. Yep. But if you do have to take a risk, make sure you do all you can to minimize the dangers. Just use these like ice axes, kicking in with my toes, driving in with my hands. Working my way up and out of this canyon. <laughs> Things I've really learned in the wild. Just give yourself that extra 10% margin of error. You know, you never know when something you grab is just gonna give way like all of this stuff. <laughs> 